right? We should move on to like Billy Cobham. How do you feel about that guy? <laughs> I don't know who that is. Oh, uh, he played uh, for uh, Mahavishnu. Those first oh, two Mahavishnu shit. albums. Yeah. Okay. Well, I've, I've listened to those for sure. Oh, yeah. Birds um, of Fire is one of my favorites. Yeah, yeah. And then, was, and then Birth of Fire and uh, what's the other one? Flame, something Flame. Mountain, Inner, mount, inner yeah. Mountain Flame. Uh, Wait. Mounting, I think. Inner Mounting. I, I, I could be wrong, but yeah. Yeah, see, <laughs> but yeah, and and right after he they recorded that uh, Birds of Fire, Billy Cobham broke off and recorded his own album called Spectrum, which was phenomenal. That both you guys need to check out if you've yet to do that. Man, I gotta that? take notes, dude. Well, no, you're recording all this shit. I don't have to take any notes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, let's jump into this. Um, uh. Welcome to my new show that I'm going to try to test out here tonight. Uh, I'm going to expose you guys to some music that you may or may not have heard of, most likely not. Uh, and then after we give it a nice listen, we'll we'll discuss it a little bit. Uh, talk about the merits of the, you know, the the composition and maybe the the quality of the recording, you know, the, the production. Uh, and let's see if I can figure out how to do this real quick. Like I said, I, I didn't get to run this for a test run like I was wanting to, but it should be fine. I should just be able to share it just like this. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm always excited to uh, find new music. So Yeah, you know, it's weird because sometimes I'm not like that. I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm full right now. Like, I'm, my head's full of music. I can't. Lately, man, that's all I've wanted to do is just, even in my own record collection, I'm discovering stuff that I didn't give enough attention. And yeah, I've really been digging your uh, your uh, show you've been doing once a week. Your uh, oh, thanks, Doctor's thanks. Picks of the week. I'm ready to do the the next one tomorrow. Um, got my, got all my records that I've listened to this week, and it's gonna be fun. I'm nice. about to do a deep zappa dive. My buddy just is about to sell me. Uh, 10 of his Zapper records. He needs some money and I need to buff out my collection. So, <laughs> Fun. And but, I'll have to apolo apologize to your viewers. I, I'm i out at, at a soccer field at my son's soccer practice. So there's like trains and cars and insects. So oh, there's noise than just, you can edit it out. Yeah. And, and that reminds me, I haven't even done an introduction of you guys yet. It's like, welcome to Billy Bob's new show. Um, we're going to react to some music. Uh, today's guest, we have uh, uh, Chris Boggin and Michael Stone. Um, we, uh, both of you guys are uh, well-rounded, merited musicians. Um, that's why, that's kind of why I picked you guys, because um, you guys do like a wide variety of music. And, uh, oh, I'm, I'm struggling tonight. I, I'm a little nervous, guys. I'm a little nervous about that. I'm nervous, too. It's okay. But my name's Bogan. It's okay. Bogan. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be that guy. Okay, it's I apologize. Bogan. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I'm also I'm also um, a little dyslexic, so I have problems reading shit. But so I, I okay. always, I, like, some of the bands, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing right. Like, I almost picked the band Priapese Me, but then I realized, am I even pronouncing that band name right? It's like, <laughs> so. Believe me, I understand. Yeah, it was a. Uh, so many strange band names these days too especially i'm into a lot of metal and and they're getting even more obscure with with the words that they're picking and and or coming up with and you and can't even read them you can't even read them some bitches his name they, they're yeah. going to make like a tree vine yeah sketch that, on something. that's part of the fun though it kind of makes it more like a, a secret club or something you know <laughs> but uh yeah Okay, so for the for the first track I'm gonna choose us uh, I chose today is uh by the band The Display Team from the UK. An awesome band that I recently just stumbled across. Um the the track I am picking is uh is the second track off their uh two thousand nine album drones called Gnaw the Iron Paw. And uh let's see if I can get this thing to uh to do this here. Not familiar with the artist already, so that's a so, good sign. Yeah, this is me neither. I've never heard of him. 
Okay, did that pop up on your screen there? Yes, it did. It sure did. Okay, let's see if this this works like this. The <laughs> a lot of cardiacs, yeah. yeah. Cardiacs, but maybe a little more, maybe a little more um, angry. <laughs> a little, that just sounds- a, still a lot of the, a lot of their general sound, and I love the, the angular changes, but still, I mean, it was angular, but still keeping a, a, a groove that you could still just bob along with, even with the, uh, even with the changes and, and short sections. That was really cool. Yeah, it was like the rhythm section was really holding it down and reminded me a little bit of like no means no, or yeah, some sure, of that, sure. like alternative tentacle stuff, uh, like really edgy. And, uh, I, I guess think at the beginning, I was like something about it was like dead milkman, you know, like I think it's oh, just sure. the, the energy of, of the, the way the bass players playing and the guitar riffs. I like that. The guitar tone is like really, it's edgy but it, it's like the production they're doing is that's pretty crazy all the shit that they odd yeah. on top of each other and transitions but it's like they didn't lose that sort of punk aesthetic too, yeah, it, was, it was very punk it was like yeah like if cardiacs went way more uh way more punk the, the drumming was definitely a lot more aggressive than uh than them but um i i just i really dug that uh what what were they called again they were called the display team that was from their uh 2009 album drones which i'm actually featuring in my album of the month club so giving them a little plug in this right here but yeah i stumbled across that album about a month ago and it's been so heavy in my rotation i can't get enough of it because not only can you hear that 
uh, myself hear that heavy punk influence that like, you were instantly drawn to, Chris. I get that really proggy, like when that, that little breakdown reminds me of some gentle giant almost, right? Oh, sure. And um, I, I, like I said, I've been blown away by this band, right? So I, I had to plug them in today because people need to Yes, well, well, time. Like a lot of times I'm not in the mood for, I'm, I'm like an old man. You know, with with a lot of the shit that I listen to, but lately I've been I've been pulling out a lot of older, edgier stuff. And I mean, even listened to a DRI record yesterday. Oh man, <laughs> is that going to be included on your picks of the week? Oh yeah, that'll oh, be a I... funny funny story to go with that. Oh, we got to catch that one. <laughs> I broke my wrist in a DRI mosh pit in in uh, in uh, Tijuana at, at Iguanas which was this crazy freaking club. Um, oh, shit. Was, when was that? Oh, God. It was it was like 1992. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, That's amazing. Testament. Um, that, that club was amazing. Have, have you guys heard about that place? It's I mean, it's it's long gone. It hasn't been around forever. But um, it I was a three I, level. I think I might have heard a bootleg or two come from that place. Yeah, th- that place was insane. Like uh, it was just just on the other side of the border, so we would park in in America and and cross the border to to just walk to the venue. Or uh, no, we you had to get a taxi at some point in there, but it it was it was easy to get to, and it was kind of lawless in there. I mean, people would would do crazy jumps off the balconies, or or um, man. It just the the mosh pits were were crazy there, and that was that was you know I don't do that anymore. Obviously, I uh, take... after you broke after you got injured, did you stay? Like, did you catch the rest? Yeah, no, I, oh, I yeah, was. Yeah, you're gonna stay. Right? <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize I had broken it. I thought I had just like overextended it or something. And uh, I even I even got a high five from Chuck Billy at the end of their set, and it hurt bad. That guy is huge. Have you ever it, you know Chuck Billy from Testament is like super tall and all mass and i man that hurt but uh yeah when you said when you brought up brought up dear that brings back some memories I, I used to love listening to them even uh back in wyoming when i was a kid yeah i was in mississippi uh growing up and they were one of the first kind of like oh, i'm gonna go to the alternative section of the, the record store and, uh yeah i was really into them i had the poster and yeah yeah the the logo was great. I would draw it on on tons of stuff. Like I, oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I did that like with Sharpie on on uh, my jean jacket vest. You know. Awesome, awesome. So um, it was really cool. Go- I added the display team to my that that album to my um, Apple Music because I'm I'm gonna check out more of that. So what oh, was yeah. it? Which song was that? That was that uh, track two. Uh, Gnaw the Iron Paw. But the whole album's great. You're gonna dig it. Yeah. So I've got it in there now. I'm gonna check it out. Okay. So for the next track, I chose the band uh, Ha. They used to go by the moniker Hardcore Anal Hydrogen, but for some reason that wouldn't wasn't going over very well. So now they just go by the initials for some reason. All right. Well. With imagine. funny story behind that is um, I've loved this band for some years, and um, but my uh my youtube music well my, it remembers every search i have ever put in, in there i could put in a band that i haven't typed in there in 15 years and it'll pop up like i recently searched that but for some reason every time i tried to search this band i would have to completely type it in because it would delete it from my searches for some reason like it was doing me a favor <laughs> huh. right but uh this band uh uh aha uh, the the track I chose is from the 19, I'm sorry, the 2018 uh, album uh, Hypercut and a track called Paul. Give me a right. second to get this shit's kicking again. Just got to say real quick, I'm admiring all of your uh, posters back there behind you, Billy. Oh, yeah. yeah that's cool. I got, I got quite a, I have, I don't have enough space, guys. I don't have enough space. Like, I mean, Look at this classic right down here oh, that I yeah. can't have up oh, nice. in the mix because I don't know where to put it anymore. Oh, nice! I have literally a screen capture of that of that uh, same uh, poster on my computer. 
saved because I, you know, I just, I love that band so much and it's so exciting to see them uh, getting back together and, and doing oh, their thing. I so hope I make it to one of them shows. I really want to go to that one in, uh, at the, the overlook. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if I'll be able to make it. Cause I mean, booking a room there. It, it just seems like an expensive venture that I don't have the money for right now. Yeah, I, I really want to go to Big Ears Fest, but I just can't I can't get away. They're coming to New Orleans, though, so that's good. I'll yeah. catch that. And they're coming to Kansas City, which is close enough for me to go to, so I hope I make it. But Because Sleepy Time has to be one of the best shows I've ever seen, guys. <laughs> yeah. I saw them seven times. Um, I just They were pretty much my favorite band for, for a while, yeah. And understandably so, and understandably so. I wish I lived in a convenient location like you. I'm in. I'm here in mid Missouri. You know, they don't come through here very often. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, can, the, the one I time I did see him, I had to drive all the way to Madison, Wisconsin, to go see him. Hmm. Right, but well, not, worth, well worth it. I, I drove ten hours to see a victim's family show once. Like <laughs> wow. ten hours there, That's stayed over and ten hours back. But yeah. The, cra- the cra- craziest thing I ever did, uh, I saw Goblin and Secret Chiefs 3 on that tour, oh, and man. it ended up being, I-, I drove from Jackson, Mississippi to Atlanta, it's like five hours or something, six hours, but it was, <laughs> it ended up being like a day or two days before my second child, third child was born, like he wow. was early, so I almost fucked up really bad. <laughs> And was was at some stupid show, you know, when my wife was in labor, but I made it back. I never got to catch Secret Chiefs. The one time they were in St. Louis that I was aware of it, I had already, I was booked to play a show with Tubbering the same night, so I couldn't bounce to go see, uh, it was Secret Chiefs and Primus was in town. Oh, Mm -hmm. Jesus. That would have been a phenomenal show, but I missed out. But I got to play with Tubbering that night, and I love that band, so... You know, trade one yeah, experience for another. And Tubbering, I've 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 heard the name for years and years, but I've just never checked it out yet. Me neither. Oh, oh man, that should have been on the that should have been on the list. Then what am I doing here? <laughs> I think somebody should know about you know certain art because it's you know adjacent or part of of some other art that you're familiar with, and it just shit happens and you and you don't get it get around to checking stuff out oh yeah there's there's almost too much of it there's almost too much of it yeah. but 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 now we shall jump to uh the hardcore anal hydrogen right, <laughs> right? but uh, i think by this time they started going by the moniker ha yes right so we'll just jump right into it I'm pretty sure there are no actual vocals to it. 
Christ. Uh, so I'm I'm getting like I mean that's that's the kind of stuff that is right up my uh my you know preferential alley. Um it's it's freaking I mean we've got combinations of all kinds of different styles. Um I'm hearing, you know, that would pair very well with like Igor, but it also would pair well with like um have you heard Disfiguring the Goddess? No, uh, no, no. The Disfiguring the Goddess as a as an EDM um guy, a DJ guy that goes by big chocolate when he's doing EDM, but he also does this extreme death metal that's similar to that. It still has some of that little keyboard and ethereal kind of ambient um, underpinnings with it when it's, when it gets really heavy and it's the whole thing is just heavy as hell, all guttural vocals and just mean, mean, you know, uh, chunky guitars and ridiculous program drum lines. Um, yeah, and there's there was a lot of that kind of thing going on here. Not, I mean, the the drum lines were were, um, you know, they were really challenging, and with the you know with a little bit of footwork and and you know again with angularity, but still having a groove to it. You know, even even when it would like get uh, get broken up in chunks, you still had there were there were a couple of spots where I felt that it took a you know a hard turn. But uh, but it was all very engaging, and uh, I, I loved the aesthetics of the different styles that they were working in. That was uh, I've I added it to my collection while we were listening. I'm like, oh yeah, I have to have this. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and listen to it. And at the at the house, it's like I'm 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 able to hear well enough, but it's a little staticky over the the web meeting, but. That's some craziness. Like it, it almost sounds like the Flaming Lips uh, yeah. got up with a, a metal band and Fat Thirty Two. Uh, you know, that, that's just a lot. That's a lot <laughs> in two minutes. I think that song was two minutes long. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I want to. I want to check that out. That was that was good stuff. What song was that? That was the song Paul off a of Hypercuts. Yeah. Um. Funny you should mention Igor. I, I call him Igor, but Igor. Right. Um, that guy, you actually just saw him play with mm -hmm. Igor. He was the guitar player, Martin. Oh, really? That's this guy right here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that whole circle of musicians is incredible. Like the, the Copramente stuff and... and uh, Warker. Oh, Have you come across uh, that one yet? Which one? Warker. Oh yes, worker. Yeah, I I call it worker, but um, yeah. It, with these names, you never know if you're getting it right until you meet somebody that actually knows. So I'm always guessing too. So don't <laughs> don't feel bad if if uh, if you think you you've got a, a band name wrong, you're not the only one. Um, but yeah, wow. Okay, yeah. That whole circle of musicians is just in, incredibly talented. Yeah, their uh, most recent album. Uh... Chimera Monstra, yeah, yeah, is pretty phenomenal. I, I highly recommend it as well. Nice. Well, yeah, that's another one I've seen. I've seen uh, that's been popping up in like my socials feed, and that's another one that I'm like, hey, that that looks interesting. I should check it out. Yeah, you, you really should. You really should. We all should. We all should. Yeah. Well, um, I was gonna choose a cardiac song. For the last one, but it appears you're already well familiar with them. Well, I mean, I'm I'm familiar with them thanks to to Marina Organ's show because um, I had never really even heard of them until I've never heard. I've never really listened to much of their stuff. Just a well, clip or two. Then I'm going to continue with uh, the initial choice that I made because I, I don't know if she's put this particular track up on her show. If I don't know, you've caught I, the show, such a great band. It it is a great band. It Bam! Was, it, we, we, I should hurt no, and I just we, hadn't gotten around to it. Like well, we were talking about earlier. This is another one of them bands that fall under the category of progressive punk or pronk, as some people yeah. call it. Like, and I know that there's that whole um, post-punk. Everyone's like, oh, anything that's progressive and punk falls into post-punk. But no, there, yeah. there's 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 really some other genres that <laughs> like mix the two. I, I wouldn't quite call this band post-punk i'd call it prunk right yeah. <laughs> like 
but we're going to continue with my initial choice. I, uh, I, my, my choice was, uh, a song off their, uh, 1989 album, uh, on land and in the sea. It's a song called the duck and Roger the horse. <laughs> it's a really fun song. Let me pop this thing up again. I don't know if Does I'm it disappear know. every time? I can't really tell on my screen. No, it's it's smooth transition. There it goes. All right. Okay, here we go. I'll give this one a little more volume. The production back in the day wasn't much. <laughs> fantastic man that's that, yeah. like it seems like they're uh it sounds like they're doing a lot and it's really dense but i bet you that that's they could probably pull that off live like it just sounds very well choreographed very well hooked uh golly man those transitions are, are nuts um it's like the a lot of the things i like about like a band like magazine 
you know, some of that post punk stuff. I like them a lot, but it's it just kind of static. Um, it's like I get a lot of those hooks and, and sort of edginess, but yeah, like you said, they're prompt, you know, it's, it's a little more progressive and, and, uh, what's the right word? I don't know. Ambitious. I, I really dig it. I'm, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna have to really go, cause you know, this is a band I'm supposed to, to know, right? But I think it's well deserved. The hype is, is worth it there. I, I really thank you. I, I like that. You're welcome. You're welcome. My, my loyalty demanded that. I had, I had to share that. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think I had heard that one before. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I was thinking through large portions of it is even though it's so disjointed and those changes, like, make you feel like you've, you've got to start over again. Like, because I have a tendency to kind of bounce along with anything. And, and every time there's one of those drastic changes, it's like, oh, stop, listen, what's what's it doing again? And then work your way back into it. But even though it does that so many times, it's still... You, you're you're being given hooks and and things that just like they're, they're all ear candy as it goes so just you know the creativity and and just the the sheer adventureness of uh, uh, or the, the adventurousness of of freaking trying so many changes that's just wild and to get it you know to get it so that it still has a a, a, a congruity or a, a you know, it stays, it stays cohesive, even though it's so freaking wacky and disjointed. That's yeah. Yeah. It didn't come off to me as like, you know, some things are just weird to be like, why not? Let's just make the weirdest thing. It, I, I mean, it seems to make sense to me, but it's like the craziest Yeah, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I stumbled across the cardiacs about eight years ago and, they blew my mind. I haven't been able to go back since. It's it will not ever leave my rotation because yeah. it is truly unique. Because I'm a huge Zappa fan, right? But I'm also a huge punk rock fan, and you can te definitely tell that Tim Smith was all up in that Zappa. <laughs> I've only really you know, gotten into a little bit of Zappa. You know that there's. I mean, I've listened to to uh, a lot of it, but there's only certain parts that that really that you know. It really grabbed me. I mean, it's always impressive what he's what he did, but uh, there's there's only certain things. Although, you know, seeing it live too is a is a completely different thing. I didn't, I never got to see Frank Zappa live, but but I've seen Dweezil doing, um, you know, just a wide variety of his stuff, and it's it's freaking incredible to watch somebody execute that stuff live. Um, yeah, I would I would highly recommend if you're, I mean, if you haven't seen Dweezil and and you get the chance, you should you should go see him perform. It's, it's a, an outstanding show. I, yeah. I think very, he, very few people can imitate his dad's style. Yeah. Yeah. He's got the phrasing down. Like it's, it's pretty freaky. Cause I mean, of all the players and musicians, he's got such a unique, weird way to approach a Senate, you know, a musical sentence. Uh, and yeah, like the, all the clips I've seen of him, it's like, wow. He really gets it, yeah. and I'm not. I'm I'm not like a huge Zappa head either. But there, there's like, I've got maybe half a dozen albums of his that that I like that I'll listen to over. But I'm far from like a Zappa head. But yeah, I dig dig some of that stuff. Yeah, but it's funny. Like people like you know Mr. Bungle. Like everybody says Zappa Zappa, and like I don't think any of those guys were into Frank Zappa. So. Yeah, I, I read um, it was on uh, Trevor Dunn's website back in 2005. I was reading through this big FAQ and one of them, somebody had asked about Zappa and he said, none of us had ever listened to Zappa before we played all them songs in Bungle. They became aware of it afterwards and they're like, oh my God, the similarity is totally there. But they never listened to Zappa. They just approached music similarly, maybe. Yeah, sure. That's what I think. I mean, there's, I, I've I've compared them in the past too, just out of, um, just the, from a creativity standpoint. I felt like they were they were equally ambitious in in uh, wanting to do something different and explore the space, really. But. Uh, yeah, I mean Zappa's got such a wide 
uh, he's got an enormous catalog so it's you know 56 it's, it's, albums he put out before he died 56 yeah. yeah like the thing that when i first got into bungle it, it disco volante what the first thing i heard was like those guys rated their grandparents record collection like i do you know like they like these weird easy listening records uh mm. so like i i felt like i was alone in the world of nerdy musicians like going into that stuff I mean, I was in Mississippi. There's not much going on down there. So anyway, yeah, off on a tangent. Yeah, I I, I live in in the Ozarks, man. My name is Billy Bob. I feel you. <laughs> the struggle is real. The struggle is real. If it wasn't mm-hmm. for the internet in my mid-teens popping up, even though it was sporadic and horribly slow, I would have never have discovered half the stuff that I know now. You know, like thank goodness for the internet. <laughs> Yeah, and my and my just constant curiosity and need to constantly search out new music. Yeah, me me too. I, I grew up in Wyoming, and and the exposure to what I would classify as more interesting music was, you know, just not as prevalent. Like you, you, there weren't as many people that were into anything, you know, different and strange. So like when I discovered Primus and then King Crimson and um, you know, stuff like that, that was a total game changer for me. And I, I didn't find out about Bungle until I moved out here. I was familiar with Faith No More. I had seen them open for Metallica and I had no idea who they were. And um, that was, that was like a, a real moment seeing Patton, you know, up close and going, Holy crap, who's this guy? Cause it was, he, he was such a, a, such an intense stage presence it was like more intense than any anybody I had seen. So I mean, that was an instant. Uh, um, I, I was an instant fan, really. But discovering Mr. Bungle, that wasn't until until like '92 when I moved out here. So I was late to the game there. But Disco Volante, that's that's my favorite album. Um, basically, I mean, it's 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 so varied and so dynamic. I mean, it goes from you know the opening tracks like a dare. To listen to the that, album. That, that opening yeah. is so beautiful. It touches me every time, man. My friend and I, we bought it at the mall, it, it, like shortly after it came out. We were driving and that came on and we had to pull off on the side of the road because we were just laughing. <laughs> A lot of times laughter means like we were really enjoying it. It's just like, oh my God, what's happening? You know. <laughs> yeah. And then the next song came and we started laughing even harder yeah, yeah. Like, in a good way. So, yeah. Well, I actually, I, I have to be honest, it was over my head the first few times that I heard it. I was, I was, I was actually very disappointed because, you know, it wasn't in the same direction as the previous album. So I was, I was, uh, I was being butthurt about it like a, like a child. And a couple of weeks later, I was drawn back to listen to it more. And I started to get little bits of it. And, and the more I listened to it, the more I, I had to listen to it. So it was. It, it literally it was over my head when I first listened to it. I was like, I have no idea what's going on here. It, it, it was a it was a slow grower for me as well. It it, it, it took a because I I bought it and I put on that first track and I was like, did I make a mistake here? <laughs> but no, that that album is is beautiful. That album is beautiful. And um, but I have to I have to favor California because that album literally changed my life because. I, I happened to get it the day it came out and I was the only one within a hundred mile radius that had that. And <laughs> the, it started off with um, sweet charity and it's just fucking, it, I, I had to get, I, I, saw that. <laughs> I did. I, had, I did that one too. I, I like the disco. Disco is the one that's going to always be, you know, kind of hold the, in my top five things, you know, that's, that's there always. That I mean, to me, that you know, they talk about the Velvet Underground and that what is it that quote about that sixty people or a hundred people bought the album or a thousand people bought it and they all started bands or whatever. Like to me, Mr. Bungle is it's almost hard not to talk about it because it's like the band that started a lot of friendships, really, for me. Uh, and you know the the fan community and stuff. Uh, so yeah, good to good to put in a word for the. For the bungles, yeah. Or as my wife calls them, Cat Captain Bungle. 
Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't know what it is. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think my wife made it through Disco Volante before she made me turn that one off. Yeah. But uh, I've also exposed her to so much music that, like, you know, poor lady. <laughs> Well, guys, I appreciate you hopping on my uh, inaugural episode of uh, whatever I'm going to call this. <laughs> Let's still have yet to brainstorm a name. Uh, uh, thanks for having us. I, I'm excited to check out both of those bands, and, and uh, I'm going to explore more Cardiacs now. So, um, Yeah, for sure. Word, word. It's nice hanging out with y'all. I don't, I don't think I've ever uh, been in a live uh synchronous conversation with either of you so that's cool yeah yeah, yeah. pleasure yeah. to uh to meet you in in virtual person yeah. yeah i mean um we've been friends on the on the facebook for at least two years with both of you guys now you were mm-hmm. mike was one of the first people to join my group and i believe i uh interviewed you for the high castle tele orchestra when that first came out or did we just start chatting it up how did that go down I can't, I can't remember. I think we just did it by tech. Like you weren't doing the videos yet. So we just answered the, Tim and I answered the questions like in a, in a text file or something. Yeah. I had, I had to go to the switch to the YouTube cause all my, uh, my text interviews cause just started dropping off of Facebook. Right. If it started with the no means no. They were the good. One. They were good ones too. Yeah. The first one was no means no. And that dropped off. Right. And the the advantage of the doing the text ones was I could talk to any foreign band because they could think about their answers and translate it into English. Now I'm a little nervous. I don't know how this is going to work because I don't speak French. And a lot of the bands I was interviewing were French, you know, so, <laughs> you know, but we'll, I'll figure it out. I actually, I live in a college town, right? That's, um, I live in uh, Missouri S&T uh, Science and Technology is here in Rolla. And the majority of the kids who go to school are from uh, all around the world. There's very few Americans that actually go to school at the school. <laughs> so I figure that might be a route to find somebody to translate it for me, you know, but my idea, man, but uh, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, guys, thanks for being on here. Um, and uh, thanks, thanks for having me. Yeah. And me. Word, word. And you guys have a wonderful evening. And um, this will probably pop up on the internet in a day or two. I, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do much editing to it. I think I'm just going to put it up like this, you know. All right. All right, cool. It is what it is. Yep. I think we just lost Chris. Oh, <laughs> maybe. oh well. You gentlemen have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having us.